when you get to my age, you will not measure how well you've done by how much money you've got. I can guarantee you that. You'll, you'll all do fine on money anyway. I mean, uh, you know, think about it. Seven hours a day, you know, you're in a bed. You've got exactly the same mattress I've got. If you don't, we'll sell it to you at the furniture market. You know, I mean, so, so that, I mean, we're on a parody. I can't, I can't outdo you, you know, in terms of my sleeping enjoyment. You can, you can match it by, by buying this mattress, which will give you a special price on it. Just mention my name. Uh, <laughs> We eat at the same places, you know. We eat at Dairy Queen, particularly if you're in my position because we own it. But, but we eat at McDonald's and Burger King, and, and when I leave here, I'll stop by a fast food place. And so our eating experiences are the same. We travel the same. I mean, I had a 10-year-old car up till about a year ago, you know, and it just doesn't make any difference to me. They, they, they all work. We live in a place that's warm in the winter and it's cool in the summer, and we watch the Super Bowl on big screen TV. You do it, I do it. You know, we dress more or less the same. I mean, I pay more for my clothes, but they look cheap when I put them on, so we're really on a, we're, we're on a parody. Yeah. So, so the money isn't going to be that big a deal. Everybody in this country is going to, you know, the, with the intelligence this group has, the energy you have, you're going to do well. So what's the difference? You know, what really counts? Well, I would say that you will measure, health is enormously important, and that's a matter of a fair amount of luck. I mean, you know, we, so I won't, I don't want, I'm not shortchanging it, I'm just saying you can't do too much about that. But you will measure your success in life by whether, by how many, and the extent, whether it's the people you want at 70 or whatever the age may be, you'll measure it by how many of them really love you, you know, in the end. I mean, you can't, you know, you, you, you can't buy love. I mean, it, it doesn't work, you can buy sex, you can buy testimonial dinners, you can buy your name on buildings, you can do all kinds of things. But the, you know, the only way you get to be, you know, love is to be lovable. It's kind of irritating, actually. If you've got a lot of money, it'd be more fun to just write out a check for a million dollars. So everybody, you know, from now on loves me. But it doesn't work that way. And in fact, you know, it, it, the only way is to be, is to be lovable. And, and you know, I've got this friend who, uh, who came out of Auschwitz and had a, at least one member of the family die there. And what is it now? It's uh, 60 years later. You know, she still, when she looks at people, it's a Polish Jew, when she looks at people, the question she asks herself in determining who she really trusts as friends, the one question in her mind is, would they hide me? Now, when you get to be 70, if you've got a lot of people that would hide you, you've had a successful life. I know people who have a tremendous amount of money no one would hide. Their own kids wouldn't hide them. I mean, they, they really wouldn't. I mean, their business associates wouldn't or anybody else. If it really came down to it, you know, they, they don't have anybody's respect. They've got their attention maybe with money or something of the sort, but they, they, nobody loves them. They pay homage to them and the kids may put up with them and hope they don't change their will or something, but the truth is that nobody would hide them. And if you've got a lot of people that would hide you when you get to be 70, uh, you will have a very successful life.